Okay, this is next in the series of a Munchkin autopsy, I guess you could call it. So, <clears throat> this is the top of the heat exchanger. And <clears throat> remove the section. Now you can see all the water tubes in this boiler. And <clears throat> the way they're made is they're welded into this header. And they come through and they make four, five, six wraps around the burner and then they come back and weld into this heat exchanger. So in other words, the water is going this direction, goes through the tubes and then ends up back into this header. And there's the big old nipple that was actually threaded into that header. Very heavy nipple. The header, the header on this side and header here. You can see here how the water tubes are all welded into that header. Here, I cut a side of this. Uh, metal enclosure off and you can see now the side of these water tubes this is actually the bottom this is the bottom pan and the condensate all ran out here <clears throat> so what I did is I cut out the tubes here's a pile of the tubes so the water tubes are actually stainless steel tubing that they smashed into an oval and then they actually put dimples on the sides of the tubes so that when they stacked them together the, the dimples would hold them apart just enough where the flue gases could get through them and so over the years when we clean these things down here in the bottom is where all the cruddy, scaly, crusty stuff wants to collect and so you have to work you have to kind of work like a plastic credit card or something in between those tubes and flush it and get those all opened up I've seen some of them so clogged up I don't even know how they worked so it's quite a job to clean the inside of these heat exchangers of course you got to come in here from this end from the burner end and you have to clean, uh, brush, work your credit card down through the openings, get it all cleaned out. <laughs> this is the secondary chamber, and this is the, called the chamber divider. So the burner is in this side, and it forces the flue gases through the tubes. It's got to go through this outer jacket and back into the secondary chamber and, and that's where most of the condensation occurs you have the colder water coming into the heat exchanger this way and flowing through the tubes this way so this is the point in which you'll get the most condensation there's actually a uh, chamber divider it's like a fibrous it's like a fibrous insulation piece that goes there and of course out here is the exhaust. So what I'm looking at <clears throat> are these tubes and it does seem to be like there's just a little bit of a rusty coating on the inside of those tubes. And I know my local uh, rep here in Denver that reps Trinity also reps a water conditioner and he claims that with the right cleaning and conditioning fluid in these systems, you can keep that surface of that uh, heat exchanger clean and it actually improves the heat transfer. So he's probably right. <laughs> but it seems like so many of my systems that I work on hold hundreds of gallons. Big standing radiators and big pipes and it's like, Holy cow, I don't know how many gallons of that conditioner I'd have to put into that system to 
protect it, but I suppose on a smaller system it would uh, make more sense. Anyway, I'm quite impressed with the robustness, I guess you could call it, of these heat exchangers. I have never had a Giannone heat exchanger like this fail. I've had minor failures on, for instance, pinhole in the outer casing where the condensate leaked out. Uh, but most of the failures I've had on these old boilers have been more controls, blowers. With some uh, brands of boiler, you can't get the burner components. You can't get this refractory mater material that goes on the burner door. Um, so I know, at least in the case of Trinity, they've stopped supporting the old T-series boilers because they just can't get parts for them. So we're struggling to keep some of those boilers still um, in operation. But I <laughs> keep warning, warning my customers, please be prepared to have to put in another boiler at some point. So this one made it 15 years and it wasn't the heat exchanger that failed. Just the crazy uh, controls and blower and whatever else. We finally gave up trying to fix it. Okay.